Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today we're going to talk about some tips for the beginner CNC user, much like myself. Uh, some of the trials and tribulations of getting one of these things set up if you're new to it. I've had a little background in CNC with a laser and a plasma cutter, so some of the concepts aren't completely foreign, but it's a different operation. There's a different workflow. There's some other things that you need to know. Maybe we can help you out a little bit, having this fresh in my mind since I just started. First off, preparation. Before you order or before it ships, your machine, you, you've plunked down your money and they're gonna take a little time to get it ready and ship it out to you. Build yourself a table or get you a, a workbench already set up and ready to go. Have your place cleaned out and ready. It's going to be a booger putting this thing together in the kitchen and trying to drag it out here or in the corner of the garage where and you got to lift the whole thing. Have your uh, table ready and it'll make it so much easier. Uh, you want to build an enclosure. Some people put a box around it so it stays, the dust stays inside. They can draw the dust out of there a little easier. I didn't go that route. Maybe I could have, but. Uh, so yeah, I got the table ready first, and it was so much easier like that. Just plunk it down. Mine's just dimension lumber, some plywood on top, some pretty sturdy legs I had laying in the garage. It's a solid build, so it works. Uh, let me see. Dust collection. You're going to need dust collection for one of these. Uh, you don't have to have it, but it's going to help you. Trust me. This thing throws dust everywhere. Uh, if you got a good blower and you want to shoot it out and sweep it up, that's cool too, but dust collection is easy and it just makes it so much better. Uh, I got old rigid shop vac with the, the extra hose that you can buy separately that is a little more sturdy and longer, not that crush proof, or it is crush proof, that black thing I've stepped on a couple times and it, uh, it no sucky no more. Uh, Along with your dust collection, uh, like Onefinity, like the one I got, you can buy the, the dust boot with the machine. You can go to e or, uh, eBay, Etsy. If you've got a 3D printer, you can print your own, but you need to have that and a way to hang it off the, the rack. This one's built specifically for the Onefinity, so it's got the rack slides and everything, but if you've got a 3D printer and you can work one of those, you can build yourself something pretty nice like that too. Uh, there's booms that you can hang the hose over. I just run mine under the table, and I got a piece of uh, cord that I just hang it up there when I'm when I'm using it. So that turns out a little easier for me. Not one of the you, you could go crazy spending money on all the extras that you could get for this thing, because people got millions of them out there. Uh, little dust caps that go on the end, sweeps that keep your uh, lead screws dust free er not dust completely free but keeps most of it out of there because if you've ever had to change out a linear bearing it's not pretty i would definitely recommend those uh other accessories let me see you can uh you can go with the recommended makita router like onefinity recommends or uh, some of the other ones recommend a dewalt router with the bigger uh, cylinders you can go spindles. I went with the the regular small router until I get the hang of this. Like I say, it's all new to me on the router side, so I didn't want to go jump into a higher price spindle and have to start all that up. And maybe I didn't like it. Maybe I didn't know what I'm doing and blew it apart. So, so far my router's going. It's in one piece still, so knock on MDF. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, okay, let's look at assembly. When you get this, the Onefinity comes in three parts mainly uh, for the machine. You get the extra box and all the cables and stuff, but the machine assembly is three parts. You build the two side rails, you square them up, you drop on your top rail, everything's square and it goes together, you're good. Uh, watch the videos. Get the handy tips. People have put these together a lot and they got videos out there, and that's what I did. I had to go back and resquare once or twice, just due to the fact of my own fault. Not, you know, you think you know what you're doing. 
and maybe you don't. That was me. I, I thought, oh, how hard could it be to square four points of contact on each side? Yeah, there's, there's tricks to it, and uh, it's pretty helpful. So check out the videos. There's uh, Facebook forums. There's Onefinity has their forum. Uh, all the other major brands, I'm sure, have forums where, you know, people are on there that have done this, and they're, oh, tell you the handy tricks and the tips. So I would definitely look at that. Uh, let's see. The next thing you're going to have to need to worry about is your software, your design software for your, uh, for your cutting, uh, your CAD CAM software, essentially. Uh, there are several options. I started out with the free one at first. Uh, I think I was using the one from Shapoko. And uh, I, I eventually went to Vectric, Vectric VCarve Pro because it just seemed a little easier to me. Uh, it seems more intuitive on that than the other one. Just my opinion. Now, I know a lot of guys out there and people that work on this stuff, they, they love the Shapoko program and all that. There's two or three different free ones you can try out if you just want to get your feet wet with it. Uh, you get into the paid ones. They're spendy. And uh, I went with the Vectric. I paid the money. Happy so far with it. it it's uh, It seems to make the steps easier to me. I don't know. I, not that the other ones are bad. It's just I tried them and maybe the Vectric V-Carb is closer to what I had for my plasma cutter and stuff, so it seemed a little more sensible to me. Um, the uh, software for the actual machine is built in. It's the Onefinity controller. I think now they've gone to a different, well, they have a, a newer version and model that's uh, a little more fancy and it, it's different, but this one is pretty easy. It's, you know, XYZ coordinates, G code, stuff like that, so nothing to it. Uh, if you've got a background in it. If, if not, it's going to be a little learning curve to it, but I mean, that stuff is pretty sensible, you know? X coordinates, Y coordinates, Z coordinates, or X, Y, and Z, and they just work together to carve and cut, so yeah, that makes sense, huh? Yeah. Sign language, hand signals. Uh, another thing on the accessories, uh, I would recommend the uh, get the probe so you can uh, get your height and your home position. It's a lot easier. I tried the paper method where you slide the paper under the bit until it doesn't work. It seems to take a lot longer. Put the probe on there and boop, drops in like 10 seconds. You're, you're set to go. Uh, let me see. What else? I got it written down here so I can see. Uh, you'll need bits. Uh, here's another thing on bits. If you're just starting out, start with the mid-range bits. Don't don't go super cheap because those might just break on you, and you never know. They, you you can get them out there five dollars a piece, but I haven't tried them. I seem seem to think that you pay a little more, and they're going to be a little more solid, I guess. And uh, I've been going with white side bit, bits. And you get them on Amazon. I'll leave some links down there if you want in the description. They're uh, they're really good. Yeah, I did get this one. It's a surfacing bit, and it's a Chinese model, I think. But uh, it's got replaceable bits. I don't know if you can see that on there. Uh, re little carbide bits that you can replace. You know, they get dull on one side. You turn them over, and they got a sharp side on them. That has been pretty handy, and it's not super expensive. It was seems like it was less than twenty bucks, maybe twenty, twenty-five dollars somewhere in there. Uh, get yourself an assortment. Here's a bowl and tray bit. And then I got a couple of end mill type bits. Uh, eighth inch. A little skinny one. Quarter inches. I get, This is a compression bit. Uh, you don't really need that unless you're getting into some advanced stuff. You can just get regular. And this is a cadence manufacturing. It's a Jenny bit. And uh, I can't remember what it's, it's the Skinny Jenny or something like that. It, it's a good bit. I don't know what I'm doing with it because I, I've cut with it and I leave a bunch of fuzz on the bottom of my cuts. So there's something you do with this. I guess I ordered the wrong one. I was thinking it was just a regular uh, down cut end mill. But this has a little extra 
tooth at the bottom so it's a compression so it'll cut down and up at the same time if you don't know what that means so when you're cutting it's going to cut where the flutes push material down into the cut so your top is not going to have you know fuzz and splinters and stuff coming out this one goes to the bottom and wherever the bottom is it tries to cut up too so I think if you're going all the way through for profile cuts both edges are smooth I, I believe that's what I was, I was doing this in a pocket where I should have been profiling with it there's a handy tip make sure you know what you're doing with your bits before you set them up in there but it's a good bit I'm, I'm not downplaying that bit these are these are a little more high-end I thought I was getting better so I went in and got them and they work they're great they stay sharp and uh, it's just operator error was the key on that one uh, let me see so we got uh, V bits for V carving so you want to put your monogrammed initials on your piece this goes in and if you get the your software will have a V carve setting or whatever and you just put your text in or whatever and it'll go through and calculate all your cuts and it looks really nice when it comes out too it's it's what you see on most wooden signs where people have seen see them they got the fancy sweeping curves and they step down in there that's a 90 degree and then they've got a 60 they, I think they go all the way down to 18 degree and are not 18 I don't even know uh, but anyway that that's what they're and they go up to like 120 degrees the wider you get the less depth you get in your cut so with the 90 you're going to go down like that far with the 30 or the 60 I mean you're going to get a little deeper in your piece to make the same width on your cut so there you go get your bits you'll need some if you want to get to start cutting you can order those up uh, just make sure your shank sizes match up with your router I think there's an adapter you can get a half inch in there but Mine's all quarter inch shank, so that's what I do. Uh, practice. I mean, unless you've done something like this before and you're familiar with the software already, you can't just go out and design up a, you know intricate carving and put it out there and it's going to look good. Uh, trust me, the first one or two you do, you're going to want to throw them in the trash because they're just hideous looking. But then the more you work, the more refinement you get on your technique it looks so much better uh, last thing safety uh, 16,000 rpm router with a tool steel bit if you get your finger under there accidentally it's gonna be gone it'll chew it off and the weird part is it almost you're looking at it as it's carving and you want to be down in there oh that's awesome and I've caught myself sweeping stuff out of the way so I can see it and then I think ooh. That's not where my hands need to be down there. So just keep your common sense about you. It's a cool machine, but it ain't going to slow down for your finger when it runs across a path that your finger's in. Uh, safety glasses. Thing throws a lot of chips, too. A lot of chips. Even with the dust collector, you can get flying dust, and if you get the dust in your eyes, it's going to be painful. So uh, that's about it, man. If you've got questions or comments you want to put down, you've got the Onefinity. This is the Woodworker X50. If you got it, tell me what you think. Do you like it? I love mine. I mean, I'm nowhere near an expert CNC router user yet. I got a long way to go, but uh, it's fun. You, you can draw up stuff and come out here and just watch it. It's mesmerizing the way it works. Uh, you don't like them? Let me know. Hey, we'll talk about it. Uh, if you got questions about this, I'm not a Onefinity expert. I'm not sponsored by Onefinity. I just use theirs. I'll tell you the reason I did the three parts. I've seen guys on YouTube videos where they're putting together stuff, Shea Poco. And if you like to do that, cool. I, I like to build stuff, but I don't want to spend that kind of time on something that needs to be this precise. And uh, I just wanted to get it and cut. So there you go. Uh, the Onefinity X50 wood, wood carver? Woodworker. You see, I'm prepared for these videos a lot, huh? No cuts, no edits. That's me, right from the heart. Uh, that applies for pretty much any of them, though. Shea Poco, uh, you, there's all kind of brands. I don't have a preference, one or the other. Like I said, just because it was looked like it was easier to put together. It's fun, though. Get you one if you got it. 
uh, stick with it. it. It's it's tough at first. You you got to really think about stuff, especially in your designs. You've got to get in there and there, there's a certain set of layers you need to do. You want to carve it all first, then your profiles to cut it out of your wood, and it, it just after a while though comes right to you. All right, I hope that helps. If uh, if you like it, let me know. If not, let me know that too. And we'll talk to you later. We'll check you out in the next video. Thanks for coming by. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.